I've used an Arduino Nano because it's pretty small and I wanted to embed it inside the pedestrian request across button which is mounted on the pole. Since everything was going to be run off 12 volt, I've stripped out all the 240 volt AC line level componentry that's inside all the lights and the switch itself and replaced it with uh, low wattage 12 volt components including some LEDs which have been driven by constant current regulators that are on the backs of the actual LEDs themselves. Obviously I'm running everything off 12 volts so we're running 12 volts into the V-in pin on the Arduino Nano itself. And then the onboard regulator that comes with the Arduino Nano is helping us to uh, set a few things to 5 volts. It's taking the 12 volt, converting it to 5 volts so that we can set things like the switches have a, have a way of detecting a high or a low signal. So the way I've got the switch, the actual switch that the, the pedestrians uh, used to cross the road is this one here which is connected to digital pin 2. Digital pin 2 is a special pin on the Arduino because it's actually interrupt zero which is a hardware interrupt when pressed will instantly fire a special routine that I've got going in the code and I'll explain the code a bit later on. The way the switch is wired it's wired so that when the sw switch is not pressed it the pin sees a logical low or ground via this 10k resistor However, when the pin is pressed, the pin digital pin 2 uh, sees a logical high, which is 5 volts coming from the Arduino's regulator. And that is what triggers the actual routine. So when we see a high, the special interrupt is captured and uh, the software then takes care of the rest of it. The way the, the actual lamps are wired to the Arduino, I have a, on digital pin 3 we have a transistor, TIP120 transistor connected via a 1K resistor to the base and from VCC which is 12 volts we pass through to ground. Now this is my test configuration here so this is not actually indicative of the actual implemented circuit this is more of my as I was testing it I was just using an LED with a resistor to limit, current, limit the current that was going through it but my final implementation will not have this resistor in place it will have just the light assembly that goes in, inside the traffic light this one has an onboard regulator on board so if you are going to do anything like this make sure that you either use a current limiting resistor or understand how you're actually feeding power to your LEDs because uh, obviously they need to be very carefully managed in terms of current consumption. Anyway, when digital pin 3 becomes active by having some voltage put down it, we get the ability to turn on this transistor and that will sync the current through to ground here, effectively turning on the LED. And that's pretty much the same for every single light that I have. So this same sort of circuit is repeated all the way down. We've got traffic red, traffic amber, traffic green, and they are you know, connected to digital pins 3, 4 and 5. Digital pin 6 has nothing on it. Even though I've in code, I, you will see that I've actually set pin 6 high. I actually don't do anything with it though. Digital pin 7, 8 and 9, or 7 and 8, sorry, are connected to another series of transistors and LEDs by 1K resistors. However, these ones are on the pedestrian green and red lights. Digital pin 9 is actually connected to a speaker. Now, I've chosen digital pin 9 because that's a PWM capable pin. At this stage, I'm not really using the PWM feature uh, as yet, but uh, the idea is that we could potentially make some more interesting sounds with the, the speaker. There isn't a current limiting resistor in here, which potentially you should probably have a 100 ohm resistor in there. I found that the particular one that I was using, this is a little piezoelectric speaker, really was okay to, to pass very short bursts of 5 volts through it and so far I've had no issue with it but I can fully appreciate the fact that, that most speakers will probably need some sort of current limiting resistor in here to uh, prevent you know, massive current draw, mainly not, not, not so much for the speaker but to protect the excessive consumption coming from the Arduino's digital pin which really can't be any more than 50 milliamps. Digital pin 10, I've used this as a switch and this is a, I guess, a little uh, single throw, single pole switch which basically can be switched either to 5 volts or a logical high or to ground, logical low. And depending on the programming, I've actually said that look, if it's a high, then go into auto mode. If it's a low, then perform the standard function, which is 
wait for a pedestrian to actually press the button before changing the lights. This gives us the ability to walk away from the traffic light just so it appears to have some life and uh, can operate on its own, from changing from red, amber, green to on the traffic to allowing the pedestrians to cross uh, without actually having to press the button. We have a pedestrian acknowledge green light. Green is on 11, red is on 12. Basically, when a, a button press is recorded, we need to sort of give some sort of feedback back to the pedestrian who wants to cross. If there's any delay for the lights to switch, it could be seen as that their button press hasn't been recorded. So we need to give them some visual feedback pretty quickly that their button press has indeed been recorded and they just need to wait patiently now and for the lights to switch. So it goes from green where it hasn't been pressed to red, acknowledging the fact that their button press has been recorded. And that's pretty much the explanation how the traffic light will be wired. Everything is wired through the pole uh, with a 12 volt source coming in from a little jack which I've hot glued to the back of the lamp itself, the pole itself, and that pretty much takes care of all the power source to the pole. There's no actual line level voltage going to the pole at all uh, since this will be reprogrammed and used by kids at a school. Uh, the function of this is just to be as low voltage and safe as possible so everything is isolated, away. all of line level stuff is isolated away from the pole itself. Okay, so that pretty much uh, covers it and uh, I'm looking forward to explaining the code in some brief fashion just to go over that in the next video.